it's time to light a fire. And, and that can be uh, very simple or somewhat frustrating, depending on your experience. So let me show you the way I do it. I have uh, a ball of newspaper that's just four or five sheets balled up tight. This is the way I've lit fires for 30 or 40 years. And I have separated out all the coke from yesterday's fire, and I also have some fresh coal. The coke will light much more easily, and so we're going to use that to get the fire started. Uh, and that helps a lot. Lighting fresh coal is a lot more challenging, so having coke left over from yesterday's fire is really useful in, in getting today's fire going. That's, that's about all there is to think of, so let's get started. Once that's going a little bit, we can give it some air. All right, and I can see white smoke. That's the newspaper burning, but as soon as I start to see some yellowish smoke, I know that the coal is igniting. And I can see some of that around this edge already. I'm gonna add a little more fresh coal. And now I see plenty of uh, the, the smoke from the coal, so I'm pretty confident this fire will start without much trouble. Clearly the fire is, is going, uh, but it still takes 10 minutes or 15 minutes for the coal around the fire to coke up properly. So I could put a piece of iron in there, but it won't heat well until that coking is, has been done. So usually you plan on 10 minutes or so before you can actually do much work. So let's look at the fire now that it's been sitting for a few minutes. And this is a, this is a pretty good, what I would think of as a mature fire, one that's ready to start working in. And there are a few characteristics that are, that are probably easy to monitor and keep track of while you're working. One is there's very little flame coming up out of the fire. So almost all of the volatiles have burned out of the coal that's right around the hot center of the fire. Even when I add air, very little visible flame. And that's one good sign of a one good sign of a mature fire. And second, we have fresh uncoked coal all the way around the fire, and it should you should try to maintain that situation 
the whole time you're working. So as you're raking coal into the fire, you're always adding fresh unburned coal or green coal, as we say it, around the edge and not mixing coke from the center of the fire with that green coal. So you should always have green coal around the edge, coke at the center, and never mix. I've also got enough depth of fire. I have about four inches of coal above the table height. Um, and that allows coke to be pushed into the center of the fire as needed and provides enough coking action to help uh, sort of maintain that supply of coke. So that, those are a few good things to look for in, in monitoring the fire and we should try to keep that kind of a balance of fuel and size of fire pretty uh, dependably throughout the work cycle. There are lots of practices that vary from person to person uh, in using coal. Uh, one of the things that comes up often is this question of water. How much water or do you need water or why do you use water? So certain types of coal from different seams uh, seem to burn better if they're wet. Some burn just fine dry. So you'll have to experiment a little. The batch that I have now benefits from being wet and I soak it in water before I put it on the forge. And I also have a, a dipper made by one of my good friends. And I can wet down the coal If, if the fire starts to spread faster than I'm using the fuel. So I want to keep the center of the fire fairly small and if it starts to get too big and unwieldy, I'll just cool the perimeter like that.